Well, what are you looking at? I don't see why we have to behave like children here. Nor do I. We have a responsibility. This is a remarkable thing about democracy. That we are, what is the word? Notified. We are notified by mail to come to this place and decide the guilt or innocence of a man. I mean, we have not known before. We have nothing to gain or to lose our verdict. This is the reason we are strong. We should not make it a personal thing. Thank you very much. Why do you thank me? You forget. It's good to be reminded. I'm glad that we're going to be civilized about this. Well, we're still nowhere. Well, we're somewhere. Or getting there. Maybe. Maybe. Mm -hmm. Um, who, who got an idea? I think maybe we should try another vote. Miss Foreman, it's right with me. Anybody who doesn't want to vote? Let's vote. Yes, vote. All right, let's do it. You know, I want an open ballot. Let's all call out our votes. I want to know who stands where. That sounds fair. I'll call up your jury number. I vote guilty. Number two? Uh, not guilty. Three? Guilty. Four? Guilty. Five? Not guilty. Six? Not guilty. Seven? Guilty. Eight? Not guilty. Nine? Not guilty. Ten? <coughs> Yeah, I'm ready to walk into court right now and declare a hung jury. There is no point in this going on anymore. I'd like to know why you changed your mind, why you changed your mind, and why you did. There are six people here who think that we may be turning a murderer loose into the streets. Emotion just won't do. Why? It would seem that the old man didn't see the boy run downstairs. I do not think it likely that the old man heard someone scream, I'm gonna kill you. Old man dream. And if the boy did scream he was gonna kill, then we have the authority, then we have the authority to prove that this man might not really mean he's gonna kill. Why don't we take it into the judge and let the kid take his chances with 12 other guys? The vote is six to six. I don't think we'll ever agree on anything. It's got to be unanimous, and we're never going to convince her. Well, at first I was alone, and now five other people agree with me, so there is a doubt. You can't ever convince me that there's a doubt, because I know there isn't no doubt. I'll tell you what, maybe we're a hung jury. It happens sometimes. We're not going to be a hung jury. But we are, right now. We're our perfect balance. Let's take it into the judge. If there is a reasonable doubt, I don't see it. But the doubt is there, in my mind. Maybe we should vote. What do you mean, vote? Not again. Hey, I, I still want to know. <coughs> vote on what? Are we or aren't we a hung jury? You mean that we vote yes, we are a hung jury, or no, we're not a hung jury? That's exactly what I was thinking of. We can't even decide on whether or not the window should be open. We can't majority vote. Right? The majority win. If seven or more of us vote yes, that we are a hung jury, then we'll take it into the judge and tell her that we're a hung jury. Right, and if seven or more vote no, that we aren't a hung jury, we go on discussing it. Doesn't seem right. It's the only solution. I agree, it's the only way. Anything to this. <laughs> yeah. Is everyone agreed? Seven or more votes yes, can we take it into the judge? No, let's, let's call out our votes. All right, I say yes, we are a hung jury. Two? No. Three? Yes. Four? Yeah. Five? No. Six? No. Seven? Yes! Eight? No. Nine? No. Ten? Uh, yes. Eleven? No. Twelve? Yes. Oh, no! <laughs> the vote is six to six. I went along with the majority vote on this question, and I didn't agree with voting that way. Not really. And I still don't. So I'm changing my vote. I say no. We're not going to be a hung jury. I believe that the boy is guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. There are some things I want to hear from those people who changed their minds. Mm -hmm. Then we are not hung jury, so we go on. Good, we go on. Why did you change your mind? She seems so sure of herself, and she's made so many good points. Honestly, the only thing I've seen him do is get mad and insult people. Does the anger and the insult change the guilt of the boy? He did do it. Are you going to sit here and turn a murderer loose because one of the jurors gets angry that a murderer is being turned loose? That's true, I guess. There's a reasonable doubt. I don't think so. The track is straight in front of the L. 
Let's take that point. L trains make a low rumbling noise and screech when they go around curves. And the old man heard a scream, which is high pitch. And it is a tenement and they have thin walls. Please remember that there weren't any, any fingerprints on the knife. And it is summer, so gloves seem unlikely. Good, good. That's it. That's it. And it may have taken the murderer a second or two to get the handkerchief out and wipe the fingerprints away. Right. Now, I want you to listen to this woman. She's got the guts. But what more do you want? You know, why don't we just time this one, too? To see. Uh, just what are we timing? Let's hear that. What are we timing? Are we reconstructing the killing or something? Yeah. Let's do that. Let's reconstruct the killing. I think our murderer could use up 30 or 40 seconds pretty easily at that point. Let's reconstruct it then. Yes, let's. Here, you be the one that does the stabbing. I'll, I'll do it. Fine, then you be the one that gets stabbed. You're younger than I am. And don't forget, you take a second to fall. And he was stabbed on his side, his right side. So fall and roll onto your right side. If someone hates another person enough to kill them, don't you think it's reasonable to assume that the murderer will want to look at his victim for a second or two? Divorce yourself from this particular case, this human nature. It seems reasonable. Hey, wait a minute. He stabs him and he falls on his right side, or the father did, but stabbing someone isn't like shooting them. Even if it's right in the heart, the father still would have worked around on the ground writhing maybe for a few seconds. That's true. There would have been enough oxygen in his system to carry him for about two or three seconds, I should think. Yeah. Wouldn't the father have cried out? Maybe the kid held his mouth or something. That also seems possible. Also, there's another point that we might bring out. Anyone who is clear enough mentally to wipe the fingerprints away after murdering someone, that person is also clear enough mentally to look around the apartment, or the room in this case, and check for any other clues. It would just be for a second or two, but they would still look around. Good, good. It's getting better and better. We're trying to make it clear. One doesn't talk about quality when murder is involved. Well, let's do it. Um, about this on the fingerprints. The kid wiped the fingerprints off the knife. What about the doorknob? If I saw a man coming into my home, a man that hated me, and he was wiping the doorknobs as he came in, it would give me an uneasy feeling. So the doorknobs would have been wiped after the killing, and this too would take some time. Yeah. You're right. You time the last one. Why don't you time this one too? Okay. Stamp your foot when you want me to start. Okay, just a second. The hand has to be at 60. I'm gonna kill you! Ah! <laughs> he would have wiped both knobs. Stop! 15, 20, 25, 29 and a half seconds, I'd say. And whoever did murder the old man, and I think it was the kid, he still had to run down the stairs. At least one flight of stairs. You see? You see? The old man may have been wrong with how long it took him to get to the bed to the bedroom. But in view of this, I think it's reasonable to assume that he did see the kid running downstairs. Okay, okay. So now both time sequences check. The one you did and the one we did. What with running downstairs and everything, it does pretty much check out on time. Sure, he's an old man who wants attention. He's probably right, but the old man feels the way everyone does. A life is at stake. So the story of the old man may well be true. Except for the fact that he absolutely swore under oath that it was only 15 seconds. And we all seem to agree that the actual time was between 25 to 40 seconds later. So you are now admitting that the old man lied in one case but told the truth in the other. I can admit this does tend to confirm the story of the old man but in part he is now a proven liar and this is by your own admission. Okay while that may be true that the old man lies in part I I think it'll change my vote once more. Uh, guilty. And uh, what about you? What do you think now? I'm not just sure what I think. I want to talk some more. At first, I thought guilty. Then I changed. Now, I'm sort of swimming back to guilty. And uh, what about you? No. I'm in real doubt. Real doubt. Oh my gosh. I, I say guilty. I was right the first time. Now we're beginning to make sense in here. It makes so much sense to vote guilty. Yep. downstairs. How many of you lived in apartment buildings? 
I don't know what you're thinking, but I know what I'm thinking. What's that? I don't live in a tenement, but it's closed, and there's just enough light to the whole city state. No more. It's like a person small. This murder took place in a tenement. Remember how we stumbled on the steps? One of the police officers had big bows, and the other one had a flashlight, remember? This old man was just behind by 30 seconds. On this, we all agree. This old man looked down a dark hallway and recognized a running figure. And he was 100% wrong about the time. It took twice as long as he thought. Then could not the old man be 100% wrong about who he saw? No. That's mm -hmm. crazy. You're making it up out of thin air. Maybe we're a hung jury. Let's be honest about it. Do you? Truly do. There is no room for reasonable doubts. Yes, I do. I beg your pardon, but perhaps he'll kill a turn. Reasonable doubt. What do you mean? I don't understand it. Who are you to talk to me like that? How do you even like this gal? She comes here running for her life, and before she can even take a big breath, she's telling us how to run the show. The arrogance of her. No one is asking where anyone came from. I was born right here. Or where your father came from. Maybe it wouldn't hurt us to take a few tips from some people who did come running here. Maybe they learned something we didn't know. We're not so perfect. Please, I'm used to this. It's all right. It's not all right. Okay, okay. I apologize. Is that what you want? Yes, that's what I want. Please, let's get on with it. Who's got something constructive to say? Well, something's been bothering me a little bit. The whole business is about about the knife, the, the downward angle of it, you know? Oh, don't tell me you're going to start that. They went over and over in court. No, I know. I just don't go along with it. Okay, the boy is 5 feet 8 inches tall, and his father is 6 feet 2 inches tall. That's a difference of 6 inches. And isn't that pretty awkward, stabbing downward into the chest of a man that's half a foot taller than you are? Look, you're not going to be happy with this until you see it again, so I'm going to give you a demonstration. Somebody get up. <laughs> Not me. I ain't you know. He's crazy. He got that knife on you know? <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna stop so funny. Fine. Okay. Now. Okay. Is that six inches? Um, that's more than six inches. Let it be more. Okay. Take the knife out. Look out! <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's not funny. What's the matter with you? Now, come on. Nobody's hurt, are they? No. All right, take a look at it. That's your ankle, down and in. That's how I'd stab a taller man in the chest. That's how it was done. Take a look at it, tell me I'm wrong. That's why I need to get out, down and in. I guess we don't argue that. Can I get a knife? Did you ever stab a man? Of course not. Did you? All right, let's not be silly. Did you? No, I haven't. Then where do you get all the information about how it's done? What do you mean? It's just common sense. Have you ever seen a man stab? No. Okay, so the boy was an experienced knife fighter, right? He was even sent to reform school for stabbing someone. Isn't that so? That's right. Okay, so take a look at this. Doesn't this seem like an awkward way to handle a knife? What are you asking us for? <laughs> I mean... What, what's the matter with you? Give me that knife. Have you ever seen a knife fight? Yes, I have. In the movies? In my backyard. On my stoop. In the vacant lot across the street. Too many of them. Switch knives came with the neighborhood where I lived. It's funny that I didn't think of it before. I guess you try to forget those things. <laughs> Anyone who's ever used a switch knife never would have stabbed downward. You don't use a switch knife that way. You use it underhanded. Then the man couldn't have made the kind of one that would have killed his father. I suppose it's conceivable that he could have made this, but it's not likely. Not if he had ever had any experience using switch knives. We know the kid had a lot of experience with switch knives. I don't believe it. Do you believe it? I, I don't believe it either. No. You're giving us a lot of mumbo jumbo. What about you? Well, I, I don't know. You? Listen, let me tell you all something. I'm getting a little sick of this whole thing already. We're getting nowhere fast. Let's break it up and go home. Before we decide anything more, I want to try to pull this thing together. This should be good. Let's get her through anyway. I'm in advertising. I'm used to the big shots pulling things together. So let's chip up a few shots to see if any of them land on green. Did you want me to time this one too? No. Oh, sorry. Now, I want you all to look at this logically and consistently. We have. Guilty. I want to know, 
Is the kid smart or is the kid dumb? dumb. What do you mean? This is a kid who was going to reform school for knife fighting. The night of the murder, he bought a knife, a switch knife. It would then take a very stupid kid to go and murder a man, his father, with an instrument that everyone would associate with the kid. I mean, yeah, he's dumb. However, if he were dumb, then why did he make the kind of wound that an inexperienced man would make with a knife? I'm not sure I understand. To murder someone must take a great emotion, a great hatred, and at that moment he would handle the knife as best as he could. And a trained knife fighter would handle it as he'd been trained. Underhand. Mm -hmm. A man who has not been trained will go overhand. But this kid is being very smart. Everyone knows that he's an experienced knife fighter, so at the moment he's smart enough to wipe the fingerprints away, perhaps even smart enough to wait until an L train is going by in order to cover the noise. Now, is the kid smart or is he dumb? Hold on, hold on. So, the woman across the L trains, she saw the murder through the train. So, someone in the train could have seen the murder too, right? A possibility, but no one did that we know of. That would take an awful dumb man. Doing a murder as a train goes by? Exactly. A dumb man. A very stupid man. A man to by emotion. Probably he heard nothing. He probably didn't even hear the L train coming. And whoever did murder the father did it as well as he could. So? This kid is dumb enough to do everything to associate himself with a switch knife. A switch knife murder. But then a moment later, he becomes smart. The kid is smart enough to make the kind of wound that would lead us to suspect someone else. But at the same instant, he's dumb enough to do the killing as an L train is going by. And then a moment later, he's smart enough to wipe the fingerprints away. So to say that this boy is guilty, you would have to say that he's dumb from 8 o'clock until about midnight, and then at midnight, he's smart one second, and then dumb for a few seconds later, and then smart again, and then once again, he becomes stupid. So stupid that he can't think of a good alibi. So is the kid smart or is he dumb? If you want to make this boy guilty, you would have to toss his intelligence like a pancake. There is dumb. And the man downstairs, on the stand, he swore it was 15 seconds. He insisted on 15 seconds, but we all agree that it must have been almost about 40. So does the old man lie half the time and then does tell the truth the other half? To make this boy guilty, he must be stupid and then smart and then stupid and smart and so on. Also, for this boy to be guilty, the old man must be a liar half the time and then he must be telling the truth the other half of the time. You can reasonably doubt. I'm I'm sold on reasonable doubt. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I am too. I wanted more talk, and now I've had it. I want another vote. Um, it seems there's another vote called for. I guess this is the way to show of hands. Anyone object? No. All right. All those voting not guilty, please raise your hand. Somebody gets killed. They, they don't care. Oh, well, sure, I, I. There are a few pretty decent, but that's the exception. Most of them, it's like they have no feelings. So what's going on here? I'm thinking my piece, and you listen to me. They're no good. There's not one of them who is any good. We better watch out. Take it from me. This kid on trial? Well, don't you know about them? What are you doing? Listen to me. I'm trying to tell you something. I've had enough. If you open your mouth again, I'm going to split your skull. I'm trying to tell you. All right, sit down, everybody. I still believe that the boy is guilty of murder, and I'll tell you why. To me, the most damning evidence That's what I mean. That's, uh, that's 
the most important testimony. Okay, so let's go over her testimony. What exactly did she say? I believe I can recount it accurately. She said that she went to bed at about 11 o'clock that night. Her bed was next to the open window. When she turned towards the window, she could look out of her window and see directly into the window across the street. She was tossing and turning for over an hour, unable to fall asleep. At about 12.10, she turned towards the open window, looked out, and saw the boy stab his father. As far as I can see, this is unshakable testimony. That's what I mean. That's the whole case. Frankly, in view of this, I don't see how you can vote for acquittal. What do you think about it? Well, maybe. There's still so much evidence to see. What do you mean, maybe? You can absolutely throw out all the other evidence. That was my feeling. While I don't deny the validity of the points that they've made, shall we say on the other side of the tracks, there is doubt. But what can you say about the old woman? She saw it. Yeah. What time is it? Uh, 10 minutes of six. You don't suppose to let us go home and finish by the morning, right? I've got a kid with lunch. Ooh. Not a chance. Wait, can't you see the clock without your glasses? Not clearly. Oh. Glasses are a nuisance, aren't they? Okay, yes. well, what's the context? What do you do when you wake up in the middle of the night and want to know what time it is? I put on my glasses and look at the clock? I just lie in bed and wait for the clock to chime. My father gave it to us when we married, my spouse and I. It was ten years before we had a place to put it. Do you wear glasses to bed? Oh, God, no. <laughs> Nobody wears glasses to bed. But the woman who testified that she saw the killing wears glasses. What about her? Did she wear glasses? Yes. Of course, she wore bifocals. Yeah. I don't know this very clearly. They were quite strong. That's right. Bifocals. She never took them off. <laughs> so, I think it's logical to say that the woman doesn't wear her glasses to bed, and she would have put them on to glance casually out the window. Now, she testified that the murder took place as soon as she looked out the window, and that the lights went out a split second later. She couldn't have had time to put her glasses in. So, supposing this woman really did think she saw the boy kill his father, but I'd say she only saw a blur. How do you know if she saw him? Maybe she's farsighted. Well, how does she know all these things? Is there still anyone here who thinks that there's no reasonable doubt? I, I will always wonder, but there is a reasonable doubt. Mm. I'm convinced there's a reasonable doubt in my mind. You're alone. Well, I think the kid's guilty. What else do you want? Your argument? I gave you my arguments. We're not convinced. We're waiting to hear him again. We have the time. Come on. What's the matter with you? You're the one. You gave all the arguments. You can't just turn now. A guilty man is going to be walking the streets. A murderer. You've got to stay with me. Come on. I'm sorry. I'm convinced. I don't usually think I'm wrong often. But I guess I was this once. There is a reasonable doubt in my mind. We're waiting. Yo, you're not going to intimidate me. I am entitled to my opinion. And it's going to be a hung jury. That's it. I mean, there's nothing we can do about that except hope that one night, maybe in a few months, while you might get some sleep. You're all alone. You know, it takes a great deal of courage to stay alone. If it is a hung jury, there will be another trial, and some of us will point these things out to the various lawyers. Come on. Time to go. I want to see Ellison. Come on. 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 Come on.